good afternoon everyone uh, good afternoon everyone uh, i'm uh, sarama from the android common panel team at google and this is my teammate uh, david we're here to talk about uh, vm workloads and how they interact with the cpu frequency and scheduling uh, this is a continuation of my talk from lpc 2022 but to, uh, to give a really quick overview Workloads running inside a VM, they get terrible performance and power for mainly two reasons. One is the load tracking inside the VM is not accurate because there's no concept of the physical CPUs uh, architecture and frequencies. On the host side, the DBFS behavior is not good because it doesn't know about the workloads running inside the CPU. So like things migrating, IO boost, stuff like that. So how did we address it? Uh, for uh, the architecture awareness and frequency awareness, we just updated FOSS VM to add the relevant DT properties, considering it's an ARM system for us. So we just added the DMIPS per megahertz property to the vCPU nodes and the operating principles. <coughs> and then to address the CPU frequency awareness and node awareness, uh, we created an MMIO CPU frequency control device. Uh, there's one that's shared to set the frequency, another to get the frequency. So when the vCPU writes to it to set the frequency, uh, you trap into, or let me talk about the other way. When it reads the register to get the frequency, it traps into the host side, reads the current physical uh, CPU frequency, and it sends it back. But that part's only used if you don't have a virtualized uh, CPU performance module, so like AMU or uh, CPCC. Um, and then when you write to the register to set the frequency, you trap into the host side, and you set the U clamp for the vCPU thread. That's a high-level idea. And then does this work at a fundamental level? So let's look at some synthetic workloads. Uh, this is very similar to what I presented in uh, last LPC, but with the, how does it look like with the fixes? So the first trace you see up there is so showing how it looks like on the host. The middle trace is how it looks like without the fixes. And then the bottom trace is how does it look like on the VM with the fixes. And uh, you have a small thread running on a little CPU and it goes becomes a big thread and runs continuously. On the host side, it takes 180 milliseconds to go from F min on little to go to F max on big. Without the fix, it never migrated because it had no CPU frequency, CPU awareness. And then with the fixes, it takes 183 milliseconds. So it's pretty much the same as how it does in the host. And then we are going to zoom in and look at okay, how long does it take to go from F min to F max on middle. Again, it took 47 milliseconds on the host. Without the fix, it took 34 milliseconds, meaning it's too aggressive because it thinks everything's running at F max. And then with the fix, it takes 46 milliseconds. So again, really similar to the host. <coughs> zoom into the other half of it. Once you migrate into the big, how long does it take to ramp up? It uh, takes 133 milliseconds on the host. It takes 188 milliseconds on without the fix. And with the fix, it takes 135 milliseconds. So again, within the error margin of the host. And new thread boost is another thing we pointed out wasn't working last time. So if a new thread starts up uh, to get F max, you have a feature to kind of get it F max sooner. So on the host side, it took 33 milliseconds. Um, without the fix, it took 78, at least 78 milliseconds. And now with the fixes and the feature, it takes 32 milliseconds. So again, very similar to the host behavior. Uh, those are all things we've fixed. One thing that is so open item is that in this case, they consider these two threads. They are taking 50% of CPU capacity and they're running on the same cluster but different CPUs. So the CPU is at you know, F max by two. And when they both migrate into the same uh, CPU, the CPU frequency is bumped up pretty quickly. F max. We take 12 milliseconds to buff up the F max on host. But with the features that have been implemented and the default view plan, when the threads migrate into the same CPU, one of them is running on the host, another is running inside the VM. And the VM, the, the worker running inside the VM is migrating from one vCPU to another. And the physical CPU, they end up on the same CPU. Right? So when that happens, because view clamp is treated as a max of min, if you set a view clamp min, uh, we don't ramp up to fmax quickly at all uh, just it's, it's as if like it didn't know anything it slowly ramps up on the post side it takes 66 milliseconds to get that max and then we kind of played with what we call as additive u clamp uh, and basically we upload u clamp actually u clamp min 
to the utilization of the thread, not just the RAM key level. Um, so effectively, if you two different threads set the UCLAN for themselves, you, because you're applying it to the utilization and then you add the UTL, it's effectively like an additive uh, mode of UCLAN. You can kind of look at it that way. And once you do that, it's kind of blocked here. But once you do that, you'll see it wraps up in the same amount of time. So it behaves very similar to how it would behave on the host. And that's kind of like the high level uh, overview on how it works on a fundamental level. David did a lot of the patches and coding for uh, patches, and he's going to do a deeper dive. Okay. Yeah. So you saw your MMIO mapping, right? For, from host to guest. What's the access control for that? What do you mean access control? So you are, how, when you, I think your guest is directly writing to MMIO, right? It's a virtual device, MMIO. So it's a virtual device. Oh, virtual device. Not, not the, it's not a real device. No, okay. Yeah. okay. So, um, I'm David. Uh, let's take a closer look at some designs we did. Uh, so because we wanted to start with sort of what we can get with the best performance, we decided to use a low latency interface of CypherCall to do the guest and host communication. Uh, uh, if we just follow that purple arrow here, you'll see that the guest CPU frequency driver makes hyper calls to either set frequency or get the current frequency. Uh, we submitted this as an RFC to get feedback from upstream. And based on that feedback, um, this is our current V3 solution where we use MMIO and yeah. Ucrine instead of uh, hyper calls. So if you follow the same purple arrow in that diagram here, uh, instead of making hyper calls, it's reading, reading writing in MIO regions, <coughs> which then gets handled in the host. The host has to now defer up to user space. And the user space has to make uh, additional syscalls back to the kernel. So as you can see, these additional context switches cost is pretty significant uh, performance hits, uh, as we'll see in benchmarks later. Um, so this is where BPF actually uh, could be a potential solution for us, where, um, again, guest sees the same interface in the MIO, but now the host, instead of having to go back up to user space and you know, paying additional penalty for latency, it can be optionally handled in the BPF program where it makes uh, BPF kernel help function calls and increasing our performance as a result. Um, so let's take a closer look at some of our benchmark results. Uh, we, this is running PCMark inside an Android VM on a Chromebook. Uh, we chose something like PCMark because unlike Geekbench where it just runs everything at max, uh, we wanted something that emulates real world use cases such as web browsing, uh, video editing, and some other categories as you can see there. The blue bar on the left is baseline. So you'll see that all the prototypes are performing better with V1 being the most performant and then V3 having a performance penalty, but then uh, adding additional improvements such as UPlan, sorry, uh, additive UPlan and UPF helps us get to the performance point where we were at. On the left, you'll see the score and on the right is efficiency, which is per over uh, million maps. So similar story running Roblox uh, inside Android on uh, Chromebook. Uh, again, uh, V1 being the most performant, along with V3, it's the red and purple parts. Next up, we have this is running storage use space inside an Android VM, uh, inside of on a Pixel. Um, similar story here, most performant being red and purple parts. And finally, we have some CPU ML based workloads. And in this case, the lower latency, the better. Uh, you see that the red and the purple are the most performant. And, oh. So coming to um, switching over to discussions, really only two topics we thought we'd ask. Please put a comment on the existing ones we talked about. But first is, uh, can we do additive view plan? And second one is EBPF. Maybe EBPF might not be the best uh, thing to talk about here, but uh, for additive view plan, we just kind of like scribbled up some patch today, literally, just to give the idea of what we're talking about. No, this is not necessarily the correct patch. But the idea is to basically take the UCLAN, if you set the, the set of flag to apply to the task U tool, then you set the UCLAN for the U tool and U tool less functions. You just clamp it to this value. Got a question online. Uh -huh. And that's pretty much the last slide. So we have uh, five minutes for questions. Dietmar, maybe? Yeah, but maybe. <clears throat> Your your RC that you had like util guest right is good to, util guest exactly your additive you clamp now. Yeah, util guest was something you can hack up quickly and additive you clamp is more so. 
something you can expose to sys up uh, to syscall research phase. It's not good for this for the other things. But the idea is the same. Okay. And, and, and you're saying that like if you would have uh, some aggregation on UCLAN, then your system would behave better because uh, your uh, your vCPU thread could essentially ask for the bandwidth it wants, right? Like you have uh, issues with kind of the breaks out. Out. Can everybody else in the call mute themselves? There's a lot of noises coming, but Deepmar, if, if I understood you correctly, you're asking, do you see clear benefit with that to you plan? Is that right? Uh, no, I'm just saying we have a in, in, in 30 minutes we have a talk about uh, some aggregation on UCLAMP versus max aggregation, and I think your use case is essentially falling into this area as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, any other questions on the call? Yeah, there's another question. Please, uh, who should go next? Hi, this is Chris. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, just one clarifying question. Um, did you propagate the utilization from the guest to the, the host, or did you propagate the specific frequency that was requested? So we take the frequency request coming on the guest side as an indication of the utilization. OK. So for example, if you change the governor to performance, we still wanted it to work. So that's kind of why we did it that way. OK, thanks. Um, this question in the room. Yeah, so for the additive part, I don't know, like it's a big part of the confusion with UCLAM. It should be a performance hint, really, and not like the way with the adding it, like it, it hints that you require some bandwidth is exactly. So it's, the devil might be in the details, but something that I have concern about is that UCLAM should not be added at all, uh, or at least not treated as a bandwidth, which seems what's, what you are trying to do over here. One part that I didn't like understand is that you said the max aggregation is a problem. And to be honest, it is generally a problem. If we remove max aggregation altogether, will this fix your problem or is, will it still be there? No, no, max aggregation does not meet our needs, right? So here is the max, max aggregation and this here, this yeah. part right here. When thread migrates from one VCP to another, on the host side, there's no awareness, but we do set the UCLAN min to say uh, FM, like 512, right? But you take the UCLAM min and then you apply it to the existing utilization there. But that vCPU thread has a, had a utilization of zero because it never ran sufficiently before. Right? So you're saying set the UCLAM min to an existing run queue that has 50% already, that is no impact, it's useless. You have to add it because workload is migrating from one CPU to another CPU. Yeah, I see your use case, but I don't know if that will be like this treated like as an acceptable exception or not, uh, but I think we can discuss on the list, but yeah. Uh, two more minutes, any other questions? I know, Amy, yeah, I have, have a, thoughts on I have a question, oh, if you can hear me, sorry. We can hear you. Uh, yeah, um, actually, um, I'm, I'm Hongya, I just replied um, on the email there. Um, this is not a technical question, do you have like, a, guide or walk through on how to replicate your setup because um, I'm also um, uh, doing the uh, some aggregation, you can some aggregation series and it seems like what you are doing with util gets is exactly uh, as the thing I'm trying to do with you climb with a new you climb. So if I can replicate set setup, I can try and see if the benchmark scores can be as good as the util guess you, you just added. Um, so yeah, can you point me to somewhere I can just set up something like that like yours um the patches you sent out should work if you're using an uh, dt based system or a system where you expose the cpu frequency to the host so if you have acp where the actual frequencies are exposed to the host and it doesn't use schedule on the host side then these patches wouldn't work otherwise you should be just able to apply these patches i just go look at a v3 that's all the details for you clamp additive we don't have it but we'll happily send a patch soon okay um so what, what, what's the device that is used to do the benchmarking in your series? This is a, either a Pixel device, Pixel 6, or it's a Chromebook, one of those two. Okay, okay. Yeah, I do have a Pixel 6, yeah. So one is like running Android instead of Chrome. Okay, out of time. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you. <laughs>